Hello, everyone. Uh, we are up to chapter 10 in our Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials course. I don't really need these. I'll go ahead and take those off real quick. Uh, in this chapter, this is, first of all, a rather long chapter. You can see over here, there's quite a bit of information. And the other part to that is chapter 10 is mostly information. Um, there's really no application of anything that you see here. Uh, the way that they did this is 10 is mostly the informational part of land security. And then when you get into 11 and on into the wireless, in these sections, they actually implement a lot of the security techniques. So there's not going to be any packet tracers or labs associated with 10. Uh, it's going to mostly be question type assignments that I'm going to give you here. Uh, and then you're going to apply all of it. So you'll have much, much more in 11 as far as implementing all of this. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and get rolling here. I'm going to break this one down probably into, uh, I'm going to say probably about three videos here or three screencasts for the length that we're looking at. So we're going to be looking at endpoint security, endpoint meaning your hosts that connect to your networks. We're also going to look at a section on access control using what's called AAA and the 802.1x authentication. Uh, we're going to look at layer two data link layer vulnerabilities. Uh, an example of that would be MAC address table attacks. And then we're going to look at some specific LAN attacks as well. So on endpoint security, you know, obviously there's no shortage of attacks being dealt out. Um, but essentially what, what we're going to go into is, I'm going to skip ahead to this diagram. This is a good example of a security architecture for a typical LAN. So, you know, we're going to come in to a layer three device. If we're using VPNs, then probably a VPN enabled router or concentrator. Uh, then we're going to have a dedicated hardware firewall. Okay. Now, the a lot of this in this section is figuring out what these acronyms stand for. So you'll have to reference back, but NGFW Next Generation Firewall. And we'll look at that in this following section. But let's just say it's a, quote, smart firewall. It's going to be in real-time contact with an AI, if you want to call it that, a database. And it's going to be analyzing things um, not only based on what's coming into this network, but based on all networks that that particular back end is being used for. So with Cisco, uh, one of the assignments I already posted for this was looking into the Talos security system, which is essentially the intelligence that's going to be uh, enabled on their devices. Okay, So once you watch that video and you look at their Talos website, uh, you should at least have a decent idea of what that's all about. But we're going to have a dedicated firewall. And then obviously we get into the components that make up the LAN itself. But note here that we have a network access control, AAA. Again, if you have to refer up to essentially the acronyms in the text, then that's what we need to do. But AAA is authentication, uh, uh, authorization, and accounting. So we'll look at that. Um, ISE as well. And then over here, they're showing dedicated devices that can handle email security. So this is email security appliance and web security appliance. So specifically monitoring uh, the protocols and activity associated with those functions. And then, of course, this is wireless LAN controller. We're going to get into a whole section on wireless as far as enterprise devices goes. And then also, when you look at the endpoints or the access devices, notice it says secured with AMP. And AMP is going to be their advanced malware protection 
system. So like we've said before, you know, enterprise security is not just one thing. It's going to be a series of things and it's ever evolving. It's going to be a combination of hardware, software, um, and also relying on third party intelligence such as Cisco, um, Cisco Talos. Okay. So then the next sections here kind of go into the specifics of some of these specialized devices. So I thought it was kind of interesting to note, according to the Cisco's Talos Intelligence Group, in June 2019, 85% of all email sent was spam. Uh, not surprising there. Um, it's pretty much just like physical mail. You know, 85, 90% of all the mail that's in my mailbox is junk mail goes straight in the garbage. And the same is, is for here. Um, unfortunately, this spam is getting more and more sophisticated uh, with capabilities to trick people. So the first one is an email security appliance. Uh, don't forget, it's going to monitor the protocol specific to email. So we know on the sending side of email, we have simple mail transfer protocol. And here's where Talos comes in. Note this sentence right here. The Cisco ESA is constantly updated by real-time feeds from the Cisco Talos, which detects and correlates threats and solutions by using a key worldwide database monitoring system. So like I said, uh, it's going to have a much larger threat pool to associate things with there. Okay, so what's going to happen based on that, this email security appliance, you can see right here, all email is going to go through it. It's going to check it. It's going to filter it. And end result is it's never going to be forwarded to the end device that, that it was supposed to get to. So it's going to block known threats. It's going to remediate against stealth malware that evaded initial detection. It's going to discard emails with bad links. It's going to block access to newly infected sites. It's going to encrypt content in outgoing email. So that's the email security appliance. Now the web security appliance, pretty much the same thing, but now we're talking HTTP, HTTPS type traffic. So notice that it complete uh, complete control over how users access the internet. Some specifics: blacklisting of URLs, URL filtering. Malware scanning, categorizes URLs, well, web application filtering, and then encryption and decryption of all web traffic. So check your understanding of endpoint security. Which attack encrypts the data on hosts in an attempt to extract a monetary payment from the victim? This would have been in the very first paragraph. So we know that's going to be ransomware. Uh, which devices are specifically designed for network security? We're going to be choosing three. Um, devices would be a VPN-enabled router. What you'd want to do is basically reference this, this uh, diagram right here. So VPN-enabled router, uh, next generation firewall, and then over here we had network access control, AAA, ISE, so we're going to go with NAC. Uh, switch and a wireless LAN controller are not specifically designed for security. Which device monitors simple mail transfer protocol traffic to block threats? Enough said, we know that's going to be an email security appliance. Which device monitors HTTP traffic? We know that's going to be a web security appliance. So we clear that section. Let's move on to access control. So in access control, uh, the way that we've been setting up our devices is essentially with local authentication. So we're going into our VTY lines, our, as well as our, um, our consoles, our VTY lines, our SSH, and we're configuring a login per device. Uh, not a good idea for a couple reasons. Number one, it doesn't scale well. So when we get 40, 50 or more devices, 
we're configuring those per device. If that login gets compromised, then someone would have access to all of those devices until we could basically change that. Okay. Secondly, it's just not as secure. So when we move toward a centralized authentication system, which is what AAA services are going to uh, allow, we're talking using something like a Radius server or a TACAX server. Uh, and the benefit there is we can also set that up to talk to our Active Directory. So we can use those same logins that even our IT support staff uses to log into the network. We can use those same login credentials to authenticate access to devices. Okay. So we already know that Secure Shell is definitely more secure than Telnet. Uh, it requires a username and password. It's encrypted. We can have it authenticated by either local database or central database. So here's just a brief review of configuring SSH. So domain name, generate the RSA keys, minimum of 1024 on the key modulus, uh, username, password, switch to version 2, uh, then apply it to the line VTYs, in this case on a router. We do the same thing on a switch, but basically we do want to do that. Now I like their uh, analogy here or their explanation of triple A. So this is one of the basic uh, components of security. It's kind of like the CIA triad. So authentication, authorization, and accounting is what that stands for. And then they kind of explain that with things that we can already relate to. So as far as authentication, who are you? Who are you is going to be dictated by, in this case, the credit card number, the credit card holder's name. Okay. Authorization, well, in terms of a credit card, it would be your credit limit. Okay. In this case, Joe employee has a credit limit of $1,500. And then accounting would basically be looking at your credit card statement. What have you spent? What have you paid? Okay, so that's a nice example of applying those to an everyday type situation. Now to transfer that to a network uh, scenario, of course authentication is going to be login. So how are we going to basically verify the identity, in this case, of this remote client? Okay, well probably using a username and password for starters. If we have multi-factor authentication set up, then similar to uh, any MFA that you've used for Google or anything like that, you know, they might receive a SMS message, they might receive a code in an email, or any number of uh, ways that that could be done. Uh, Server-based AAA, essentially we're going to have, well in this case they're showing a router doing the authenticating, but in a mid to larger enterprise, we're going to have a dedicated server for that. And as I said earlier, we're going to rely on either a radius, remote authentication dial and user service, or terminal access control or access control system to basically communicate with that. And of course, the beauty of this is we could have multiple devices authenticating to that same server. Okay. So that's the authentication part. The authorization, of course, in a network situation would be what is remote client authorized to access. So is, is he or she authorized to access you know, the settings on this router, files on a file server, whatever the case may be. And then the third piece to AAA is accounting. Accounting is basically keeping track of who accessed what on what time, on what day. So basically we're looking at logs that will log access to all of the network resources. Okay, the next section here is a little blurb on 802.1x. That would be IEEE, of course. And I'm going to read the description and point out a few things. So IEEE 802.1x is a port-based access control and authentication protocol. 
Jackson cut. So essentially, if you look at the system, we have what's called the supplicant, which is the end device, accessing what's called the authenticator, which in this case is a switch, okay? And it's basically going to authenticate this device and determine whether it's going to allow it to communicate through this port, okay? And if that's allowed, it's then going to forward that to the authentication device, authenticate to, in this case, the server, and then if it passes that authentication, the device will be able to access the network. So the purpose of 802.1x, it restricts unauthorized workstations from connecting to a LAN through publicly accessible switch ports. And then that basically explains it. We're going to see this utilized, especially uh, when we get into enterprise wireless in a later chapter. Okay, so let's do our check your understanding for this section. Which AAA component is responsible for collecting and reporting usage data for auditing and billing purposes? Well, collecting and reporting, you're dealing more with, in this case, accounting. Which AAA component is responsible for controlling who is permitted? Who, keyword who, is permitted? So that would basically be authentication. Which AAA component is responsible for determining what? So what would be, we've already authenticated, what are we authorized to access? So that brings up a good uh, point. If you want to put it in terms of who, what, when, who would be authenticate, what is authorized, when is accounting. In an 802.1x implementation, which device is responsible for relaying responses? Let's take a quick look here. So relaying responses, okay? So we can see that the switch is going to relay a response back to the client from the authentication device. So basically, the switch is called the authenticator. Let's do a quick check there. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video here. Like I said, I'm going to probably do this in three, maybe even four short videos to prevent these from being uh, too extremely long. So I'm going to stop this one right here.